Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, oh yeah, people need. Hey, nobody's fucked up now. The skull's gone. Oh, 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 oh. The caravan stops at a split in the road. Ahead, the path leading to Shirdger Home veers off into the hills. <clears throat> Which are now swimming with familiar black shapes. Dredge that way too, grimaces Ivan. The summer path leads straight to Snorgahor. While taking the main road will add several days. They're everywhere by they're every way by now. I suggest we go around past Hawk's Rope. Uh Yeah, let's go around. I hate to say it. But I'm not willing to walk in the swarms of dredge anymore. Juno will have to wait. You turn toward the long round Howard Snarp instead, hoping you've saved lives in the process. Hoping you've actually kept Hogan and Mogan from getting fucking killed! They're like, look at me, I'm Hogan, I'm Mogan, let's go, brother! And then they go, blah, Viking, dead. As you're nodding out to sleep, shouts of FIRE pull you back to attention. Flames quickly consume a supply wagon in a few temps. A woman cries out, My boy! and points to a burning tent closest to the outlying varl. Two of the giants are motionless, staring at the spreading fire with terror in their eyes. Make an effort to save the rest of the supplies. You and another man douse the wagon with a fire barrel squelching the flames and saving most of the food. After the fires die out, you find a woman sobbing at the side of her dead son. You glance toward the ashamed Varl before saying, Without these supplies, many more would have died. Which is true! Oh no! The morale went down and we lost a useless person. What in the depths was that about? You mutter to yourself. Something about the fire. Oddleaf tells you. <clears throat> I've heard of this before. They don't like it. It doesn't change what happened, you think to yourself. They're big frosty giants. Of course they don't like fire. Oh, well. Hey, we got the old bearded man. You know? We got the old bearded man. That more than makes up for some fucking kid. Besides, a kid got barbecued. You can go in the supply wagon. It's a modest proposal. Hmm. Really, guys, I just let you outside. Uh. Hold on. I gotta go see what this is all about. There's quite literally nobody fucking here. Jesus Christ, Rambo, you fucking retarded asshole. Uh, you enter a village of miners who want to know what has been happening recently between the rumblings of the quake and the sightings of dredge in the distance. As you look around, you see a lot of elderly and children, and you know these people will only be more mouths to feed. Uh... Mm. Don't expand the thing any further. The words stick in your throat when you tell the townspeople you won't be able to take any more of them into the caravan. They look disappointed and understand, planning to hold out as long as they can. Oh no! Let me get. Do you have food? Ooh, one renown gets us. I will purchase all of thine food. Oh, sorry, man. We we can't take you with us, dog. There's too much shit going on. Two armor per rest. One armor. Fuck that shit. We will buy all your food though. Six six food for one renown? That's a that's a good deal. Everybody's all like, oh my god, we're all gonna die. Buck up, buttercup. Take a couple days rest. Just a bunch of fucking old people. Look at that, shouts one of your clansmen. The caravan stops to watch Dredge pooling into the village you just passed through. 
I hope anyone who stayed behind got out alive, says Lead, but you have your doubts. They're coming, not, says Ivor, pointing to a line of dredge, <clears throat> leaving the village and marching towards you. As you watch, the dredge in front falls over, then one behind it falls as well. You hear a twang to your left. Nid, the archery student of Odd Leafs, who you recall deftly shooting a snow rabbit, is firing arrows down the hill. Another dredge topples. That's incredible, says Odd Leafs, squinting. But we should get out of here. Oh, hold on, let her do a few more. The next shot bounces off a of dredge's armor, but the one after that doesn't. The Colossus falls to a knee. Another dredge goes down before you get moving again. Why don't you come along the next time you want to try out that bow? You tell Nid, who nods with a smile on her face. Murder! Let's go! Bye, useless people! Thanks for the food! Harsh words from one mother to another draw the attention of the entire caravan. My daughter marries Ragni and no or no one. That reed thin tramp you call a daughter won't provide sons? The insulted mother bares her teeth, ready to attack. I that you deal with it in yourself. Whatever. I ain't pulling the pin on that grenade. You turn your back on the women, encouraging others to do the same. The shouting eventually dies down, but the unease in the camp persists. Whatever! We ain't got- Shepard ain't got time for this shit! It's a gourd stone! Stone of Dunderfuck passes around here. The frozen climbs here. Climbing here looks like the rock is split and is falling apart, held together only by the deep snow. Curiously, when standing between the stones, the wind drops off completely, picking up once again to pass through. I almost wonder if we should rest here for the night, says Ivor, who seems to have noticed the same thing with all the snow around it. Dredge might not even be able to find us. Yeah, let's stay here. You walk around the camp before settling in. Along each strand of Dunder's massive beard is carved a different part of the story, and you turn your head to and fro to read it. While the Loon Mother was the first to create, she soon found a counterpart in Dunderfuck who embodied her ideals in a masculine form. Dunder took some of her creations, gave them beards, and showed them the secrets of smithing, though many remember him as fondly for teaching them games and songs of murder. As the camp settles in, you notice a group of boys huddled around something. They show you an offering box carved into the godstone itself. The box is an elaborate construction of interlocking pieces which slide around when touched. You can't get it open, they tell you. It's like a puzzle. Oh, try to open it. The boys take turns working out the puzzle and give you some tips on your turn. Though, you don't seem to make much progress. Eventually, they leave to sleep until it's just you and a couple other determined youngsters. I don't keep working on it. It's hard to know how long you spend sliding around the smooth puzzle pieces, but when people begin emerging from their tents, you know that you're in trouble. Exhausted from the long sleepless night, or still, the box remains closed as you shuffle wearily along with the leading caravan. Fuck! There's gotta be a way to open that! Godstone Dunderfuck! Okay, so working on it all night doesn't work. There's a way to open it! I know there is! I just, well, I know there's a way to open it, I just don't know how. Get some... Hmm. 
Instead of spending all night on the silly game, you go to a let and huddle together to keep warm. You wake up with a thought so profound that it strikes you like lightning. Rushing to the puzzle box, your finger is moving it with purpose until you hear a click. The lid springs open. Inside is nothing. Oh no, says a boy who was watching. What a waste of time. To your surprise, when you close the lid, the whole box detaches from the stone. With a shrug, you take it with you. You're suddenly glad you didn't spend all night working on this. Now. Puzzle box of the Twin Rivers. Okay, and we got a double morale bump. Up ahead, a scout shouts. Some giant hall, but it's empty. You approach the structure, but recognize none of the markings. The walls seem unsteady at best. Finally, so sleeping beneath a roof, you overhear several families begin unpacking. Uh... Yeah, the walls... Keep everyone back until you're certain it's safe. Several volunteers search the building with weapons drawn. Just as they're announcing an all-clear, a barrel leans against the support, which gives way to a th a and a third of the structure crumbles. Luckily, no one's injured, but you leave the crumbly building behind. Good job, fatty! You almost saved us some food! It's hard versus turf! In the distance, Hawk Sturp smolders like an old campfire. Even from here, you can see black figures shambling through it. Eh, that looks like a dead town, remarks Ivor, confirming your impressions. There's usually survivors, oddly reminds you. I'll just go check it out, just in case. Eh, I hope others would do the same for me. Dredger are, not are nothing we haven't faced before. Ivor grunts, but otherwise says nothing. Besides, it might, it might throw Bellower off the scent a bit. You had a day's march out towards Harkovshire. As soon as you step foot in a small town, you think you've made a mistake. It's thoroughly littered with corpses. Within moments, the dredger upon you is as uh, though you stirred an angry hornet's nest. You draw your weapons. Boop a doo. <laughs> Nid. Nid R is the join us. Hey, Gunny. Sorry, Gunny, we can't level you up, bro. Spend all the money on food to keep people from, you know, starving, although... It's more to keep morale up. It doesn't actually matter if people starve. Like, you can go the whole thing without actually having food and have everybody fucking die off. There's no, like, end state. It's just like, oh, yeah, I think war is harder. But then again, the enemy the enemy numbers always seems to scale somewhat with yours. So you're never massively outnumbering them. So it's kind of like... It, it's sort of just like an... It's more for morale. Because if you have high... If you have normal morale, your willpower is normal. If you have high morale, you get bonus willpower. And if you have low morale, you take a willpower penalty during battle. So it's more for it's more for battle bonuses than it is for actual story purposes. So what does what does the puzzle box do? One will per turn and plus three will. That is actually really good for him because that gives him an extra three willpower to fuck about with and it regener if it regenerates one per turn that means magic dance magic dance motherfucker all right guys time to earn some renown so i can level you cockfuckers up Oh god, what are you doing over there all by yourself? Alright, so we got a... <clears throat> we have a 1218. Sorry, but this four square boy here needs to... I, I do not like this... Look at me, I have 18 fucking attack power.
Uh, Omleaf has more life. Four square boys. What's the range on this? Two, three, four, five, so it's six out. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, as far as you can get. Stop that! Damn it! That fucking trap, man. Oh good, it doesn't trigger on friendlies.
God damn it. It's a kill. Hmm, the town has nothing but ghosts, and now covered in more dredge bodies, too. Remarkably, as you're about to leave, you find an old man sitting quietly in a tattered market stall, with a couple of items in front of him. He hums to himself as if nothing were wrong, and seems to be in shock. Your clansmen gather him into the caravan before they leave. Baru? Get it while it's hot. Ooh, never deflected. Never deflected. Wait, hold on, hold on. This is a... Oh, this is a level 4 item. Never deflected. That means that no matter what your strength or the enemy's arm... I might have some shenanigans to pull with that in the uh, final battle. Hmm. Don't know if we've ever spoken. I'm Nid and you're Rook, I know. We've actually been traveling together for a long time. Isn't it strange how you can be so close to people and not know them? Mm, every day I pass people I swear I've never seen before. I wanted to thank you for letting me join you. Have you always been such a good shot? Honestly, I never even tried before Oddleaf made me. I spent my whole life making clothes, cleaning. 
Mm, oddly is good, but I don't think it was all her doing. It feels right. I just look where I want, want it to go. Anyway, I feel better. The caravan, the people worrying all day and making problems. Sometimes they really stew in their misery. I'm glad I can do something helpful. Where are you from? I don't think you're from Skoger. I knew most of the people there. No, I had a house in Frostfeller, but we were driven out when the dredge started to show up. My husband died trying to protect our home. My sons and I were thrown out into the fields. I'm sorry. Echo's men killed my husband. Now Echo's traveling with us. For a long time I was angry. Why did he get to live? Why did you, why did you decide for the rest of us? You look away momentarily, not sure what to say. But I've let it go. I have three sons, and I don't want them to grow up with hatred in their hearts. That's why I wanted to thank you. You're welcome. I should get going. No, don't th think anything of it. We all have our own problems to deal with. Let me know if you need me to put an arrow in something. She returns to her tent where her boys are waiting for her. So that may have been a waste of renown right there, buying that stone. But... So basically, there's two stages to the final battle. It's kind of a... The first stage is kind of a, some plot bullshit. You have to take the MacGuffin item of macguffin and shoot the final boss with it to do plot, 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 plot. Well, you only have to reduce his armor to a point where you're guaranteed to hit him with it, so there's no chance of it being deflected. So what I'm thinking is since that thing makes it so that you're never deflected, I should hopefully be able to just saunter on up to him when he's in range of, the, of an arrow and just go, Look at me! Plot power! Doink! And, just com and hopefully just completely bypass the first stage of the fight. Maybe I don't know. There could be some pl there could be some trigger bullshit associated with it, and you know I might still actually have to reduce his armor enough to actually penetrate. But yeah, a trail of blood leads to a clearing where you find a large wounded varl. He's gnawing on his shield, swearing at no one in particular, and occasionally slamming his cudgel on the ground. If not for the heavy bleeding, you leave this one alone without a second thought. Uh, he's eating his shield, and he's rabid. Let's go. Even on second thought, the risk of dealing with this insane barrel is too much. You slowly step away from the giant's clearing and pull the others back with you. That guy's fucking crazy, Rook! Yeah, I know. That's why we're leaving. Oh, jeez, Rook. That guy's fucking insane. Shut up, Eggie! Actually, I think these are all your party members up front, so I'm guessing that's Eggy. Because there's, I mean, there's Ivar, Gunny, and Crumbum. The Godstone for Ingrid, Goddess of Knowledge, looks on as the caravan takes a much needed rest. Ivar shoes some children away from a solitary dredge slinger laying beneath the stone. Should we be worried about that? You ask Ivar, pointing to the dredge body? I don't think so, he replies. Still, couldn't hurt to have a few guards look around. Hours pass without warning. Inspect the god strong. Ingrid's godson is carved with ancient runes, which don't make much sense to you, though Ivan tells you that some of the menders have deciphered them. It's how much the menders learn the or it's how the menders learned the language of the gods. Past the large stone, a long series of slabs contain more writing all the way down the hill. The odd thing, he tells you, is that the writing occasionally changes depending on who's reading it. Usually it describes the history of the gods, but it can be about nearly any topic. Sadly, Ivan doesn't know how to read it himself. Juno could, he says. Mm, okay. <clears throat> Let's go. As you're ready to depart, you hear screams from near the main godstone. Some boys so curious about the dead dredge before start shrieking and pointing. For a moment, you think it must not have been dead. But when you see what they see that they have opened a wrapping that was in the dredge's hands, 
Wait, says Ivor, his arm across your chest. This shouldn't be seen. Get everyone away. A chill sweeps over you. A let pusses pass and gas. Stop! Stop, shouts Ivor, but the curious onlookers have already seen it. Leave it. On the ground before the dead slinger is a small stony figure, its hands searching for something it can't find. That's a baby. That dredges a woman? We've been killing women? We've been slaughtering women and children this whole time? Leaving them to die? In war, it's only the males who fight. We've been fighting these dredges the whole way. Why are women with children on their backs attacking us? They're not invading. They're running. Everyone stops dead in their tracks. The entire caravan's gathered around aghast. And when I spoke to Juno, she told me something was coming. She didn't know what it was. The darkness. Something black is covering the world, and the dredge are running from it just as we're running from them. The serpent, the quake, it's all the beginning of the end. Ivor, you knew? Why? Why didn't you say something? Eh, this isn't the time. When I was young, I killed one of the Sunder during the Second Great War. We called it Rays. Every time we would build our defenses, it would flatten them and push us back again. I became separated from the rest of the barrel and stumbled upon Rays deep in a snowstorm, alone. She was nursing. I threw my axe. It twisted in the wind. Her son died in her arms. She was so pathetic, kneeling in the snow. She didn't even try to stop me when I took her head. That's how I killed Asunder. When I found my way to Grafheim, the Varl wanted to make me Kender, next to be king. I left. I walked until I ended up in Skober, where no one knew what I had done. The only sound is the wind blowing through the trees. So Big War Hero was like, I'm gonna get you with this axe! Oh shit, the wind twi made it twist! Oh, I killed your baby! Eh, you ain't defending yourself, womp. Well, I guess that's one thing. He could have been king, but he's like, I did a bad. I'm just gonna go this way now. For a long time, nobody says a thing until a child breaks the silence. What do we do with the baby, she asks. The lump, a lump forms in her throat, looking at the small obsidian creature squirming before you. This won't actually come into play, I think, until the third game, but it's coming with us! I always want a pet rock monster! You argue strongly for showing mercy and humanity. Some of the women in the caravan hesitantly agree to take the dredge, take in the dredge infant, while others are furious about bringing it along. But they can suck my dick! Not long afterward, one of the women comes to you. Its swaddling was being held by this, she says, giving you a hairpin that looks distinctly undredge-like. An inscription on the silver almost slips your notice. Persevere. From the goddess herself, if you ask me, the woman tells you. Yeah, I don't think that comes into play until, like, the third game, so... I don't care, I want a pet rock! <laughs> Fuck you! I'm the one who wears the daddy pants in this caravan. If I say raid the farms... We raid the farms. If I say attack the mo rock monsters, we attack the rock monsters. And if we have a chance to take a living pet rock with us, fuck you, we're bringing the living pet rock with us. You're making the usual rounds when you hear a rather loud debate coming from the area that the Varl have gathered. I've rejoined you as you approach. Ah, fucking hell, what's going on now? Ubin. You'd rather be known for falling asleep and dying in a corner of a meat house and battling asunder? No, I'd rather be known for not dying. Duh. Don't even know what you're worried about. <clears throat> I did this a hundred times in the Great Wars. Take some warriors, plow headfirst into the dredge. They'll follow you into the hills, get lost. Now they're not following you. When you did this a hundred times, did they have Bellower leading them? Have you never heard about the time I hit Bellower in the head with a throwing axe? Both of our will halt their debate when they suddenly notice you're watching. <clears throat> so, you're planning to confront the dredge? Careful, my friend. A lot of old history getting thrown around here. <laughs> the warriors were just noting that there's a 
Uh, there's a damn good number of dredge on our asses. Bellow are pulling up the rear. Hmm. This one thinks he can just wander up there and throw them off our tracks. How about some gratitude? Thought you'd be... Thought you'd be happy to finally be the oldest varl in the land, Ubin. I'm never happy to lose more varl, Crummer. Besides, I'm not convinced that you're really older than me. <laughs> Old rivalry you got going here. Comments like that remind me I've already wasted too much time doing nothing. In the old days, I'd already be halfway to the battlefield by now. Speaking of which, you coming, Ingvar? You could ask Bellower for your arm back. Hmm, don't think so. Not exactly in the mood right now. All right then, I'll tell ha I'll tell Hargrabard you said hello. <clears throat> Crummer and a good many Varl warriors head out towards a growing army of dredge. Is he gonna come back? Hmm, he always has before. This time feels different, I fear. That's kind of the reason I never really use Crumb Bomb. <laughs> Crumb Bomb's just like, I got a murder boner, let's go! <laughs> He's like, bye! Bye, Crumb Bomb. Ah, oh, everybody's getting sad. Everybody all sad and shit. No encouragement or tales of glory will lift the spirits of the caravan. In the north, we have times like this, says one barrel. <clears throat> the other giants grin, raising tankers and horns of meat. Skull, they shout, and make short work of their drinks, explaining that each person takes a drink when someone tells a story that's more miserable than the last. Others join them for the second round, and, uh, and the meat is passed your way. Fuck it! Get drunk! Taking the meat, you shout, Skull! The crowd cheers and laughter echoes through the cab camp for hours as each person comes up with an increasingly more absurd stories of woe. The Varl's remedy is the success, and the caravan is in a much better mood the following day, albeit hungover and with less mead than before. Mm. <coughs> it was either that or I park and camp. It's Shingerhorn! Gather round, doubters, echoes a shout in the distance as Crummer and his band of warriors break through nearby foliage. Then behold the invincible Varl. The caravan is thrilled to see Crummer return safely. Did the plan work? asks Ubin. Work, responds Crummer. Of course it worked. Same old dredge. Should be another day or two at least before they even find their own asses. And if you apologize, I'll tell you how I've found these, Kermer says, tossing you a pair of leather gloves that look big enough for a varl. He leans in close, whispering so Ubin can't hear. Had something to do with a raven's nest and a hair tie. As Sigurd approaches, we fear the worst. The once calm lake surrounding it now looks like a bowl that has been flicked. Proud home sinking into muddy water. The side effect of the quake. What has the rest of the world become on the other side of those mountains? Sup, bitches? You got any food? Although I can't really spare to spend any more renown on your bullshit. One catastrophe to another, says Oddleaf, as you pull into Zorgerhorn. The town appears to be sinking into the lake. Townspeople peek from dark windows and makeshift hovels further up the hill. No, says Ivan, looking frantic. Where is she? He runs to the front of the caravan, looking out over the water. Juno isn't here, and you get the creepy feeling you're not welcome either. Going up further looks out of the question. The beach is bare, aside from the occasional skeleton of a ruined fishing boat. You reluctantly set up camp in the sinking town. All I'm saying is how long are you willing to wait? While taking stock of the caravan, you're inadvertently walked into a debate between Onleaf and Ivan. As long as we need to. 
and I think we need to get out of here. I don't feel good about this place. Why? What's wrong? Something doesn't feel right. The people here are staring at us like those vultures in the wastes. I'm sorry, Ivan. I think Oddleaf is right. I saw a man the whole time we were setting up. He was just watching me. Uh, in a creepy way. And how long before the dredge find us here? Juno will come. Just give it a little more time. Rook, listen to me. I need you to trust me on this. No, we're not. Because Juno told you, go to Shrinkbaharm. And then when you're done there, go to this next place. You fucking retard. Also, you can wait here as long as you want, because every time we try to leave, he's going to beg us to stay. But you can wait here as long as you want. She never shows up. People have tested it. And you're going to give me three food for one renown? You can kiss my fucking ass. What's this do? One armor per turn. One will per kill. Ooh. One will per... Plus one will per rest. Here, Rush. Crumbum's back. So, you don't get any more levels. You don't, you don't get any more levels. You don't need no more. Uh... No. Rook. Rook need the levels of up. Oh, what's this do? Push three strength. Plus three break. Well, that's an upgrade from what he's got, so... Knockback on strength greater than four. Plus three will. You're already level three. Here, you can have this. You're going to need this. You don't get any more levels, though. I'm not wasting any more renown on you, so... So what's this? Plus three strength? What's this do? Two strength resist. You know, big boy got some big hands. Gunny, you get you got the armors. But you you're not you're not strong enough yet. Cause I don't have enough renown. Oh well. Wait, shit, how many kills does Rook need? Oh well. Hmm. You're really worried about her, aren't you? What? Oh, Juno. The worry doesn't even begin to describe it. Yes, we get it. You're hot for teacher. She doesn't find us here or something's happened to her, even though she was dead already? <laughs> Are you sure what you saw was real? Could have been a dream or, I don't know, you were pretty fucked up. I don't know. To be honest, I'm not sure anymore. Everything's a blur. Eh, don't tell the others I said that. I have to hope it wasn't just a dream. So what's it like to be completely batshit crazy? Being a mender? I guess I really thought about it like that. Just a part of me. They knew very young I would join the order. Born into it, you could say. My mother and father are both menders. The guild is for lots of people now. Builders and healers. Do they all pull lightning out of the sky? No, no. That's not normal. It's one of the reasons I know Juno. She's one of the council. She helps me control things like this, so we don't end up scaring people. Alright, so how does weaving work? <clears throat> well, the hardest part is usually seeing the threads. Everything's part of the tapestry. It's made of the threads woven together. If you can see the threads, you can manipulate them. I don't know how to explain it, really. It's like trying to play a harp with invisible strings. Look at my staff, for example. Some menders carried intricate patterns into the wood to help them remember the shapes of the... Uh, like I said, hard to explain. So why is Bellwer being a bitch? Uh, I saw Grofheim as it burned. 
Ivan looks far away, gets a far away look in his eyes. The sunder blew through it like a tempest, and the varl fell in thousands. Most of the sunder left the city and, and headed south. Who knows where they are now? They might be destroying every town they come to, or heading towards Abarang. Bellor stayed in Grofheim, just for the sport of it, I think. As we fled to Einertalf, I, I thought he must want to wipe the varl off the map completely. But then he came after us! Mm. Mm. Maybe he knew Ivor was the one who killed Ray's. Maybe, but I... Let's just make sure he doesn't catch up. So, do you really think this is the end times? I don't know what to think. I wish I could give you a better answer. Even if we escape the dredge, that serpent set of darkness is covering the world. I don't know how long that will take, or what it even means. I'm just trying to solve one problem at a time. The menders are in Aberang. If we can find ships and make it to the capital, we might have a chance. All right, I'm out of here. No, it's okay, Rook. I appreciate the talk. It's good to stay grounded. I spent all day worrying about serpents or sunder. I think a lot of people are intimidated or scared, maybe, of me. Don't worry, it's nothing new. I'm used to it. Maybe sometime we can talk about things that don't include the world ending. All right, everybody! Okay, let's book it. Rook, wait, please, Ivan begs. She'll be here. We need her. She's not coming. Ivan looks out across the lake with a thousand mile stare and says nothing. No, yeah, we've got problems, said Ivor. The old place is flooded. We could try to walk the muddy parts, but it'll be slow going. We could try to float the caravan over the lake, but we might end up might tip or get stuck. Or we could just go around the whole thing, but no idea how long that'll take. Uh Fuck it Chalk the wagons He spent some time rigging the wagons to float on the water, sealing them with tree sap or whatever else he had on hand. The rest of the caravan finds anything they can float on, small boats or makeshift rafts. Some swim. With a deep breath you set off from the bank. You you do your best to float the various ragtag groups of the caravan across the muddy lake towards Birgisher. Things go bad, quickly go bad. Between rafts pulling apart and people tipping into the murky water of the lake, eventually you gather everyone, but you lost precious time and supplies to the bog. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Actually... Yeah, that... Just like Oregon Trail, you never attempt to ford the fucking river. Well, let's see, 20... Twenty supplies... Talk to this dumbass. Okay. Scuffle's broken out in front of the houses. Steve shouts one of your people as a group of strangers flee from your camp. Oddleaf is already running in the direction. They took our supplies, you hear from nearby. Chase the thieves. Come on, you shout, and several people join the chase. You wander the beach where some men have been waiting for you. Some terse words are exchanged about whether anything had been stolen or not. You don't see who draws the first weapon, but it ends, that ends the conversation dead. We lost five supplies, it's time to fucking murder some bitches! Okay, this works, because I can get more renown out of it.
This works. Oh, wait. Okay, shitlords. This fucking works so I can kill the locals and get more renown. Ah, shit. Gunny actually make it there? Fucking archers! Fucking hell. Get away from my daughter, asshole. I need her to be happy for you. Never mind. Whatever. Now she can't do shit. Thank you. 
Really? You're just gonna focus fire? I have to. I was gonna rest up to boost morale anyhow. Because I'm inevitably gonna run out of food before I reach where I need to go anyway. Thieves scatter pretty quickly and you start laying into them. When you return the caravan, you discover why. Even more supplies have gone missing since you rushed out to fight. A random assortment of people from the caravan confront you. Listen, we don't feel safe here, and I don't know about it. Don't know anything about menders or whatever, but we're gonna leave, and I hope you'll join us. Looks like a couple dozen people, farmers and fighters alike, feel the same way. Yeah, let's go. Fuck it. Ready to go. Ivan casts his eyes upon the ground, but doesn't protest. The caravan packs up, and prepares to leave. Ford the river, who chalked everything, and it takes much way out the wagons you can. Soon you're walking through ankle deep water and thick mud. The footing is sticky and slow, but the water isn't too deep outside town. It takes a while, but you manage to cross the enormous mud pit outside Sugar Herm with an intact, if not cranky, caravan of people. Minus 14 supplies! Fucking hell! Wait. The rest thing is gone. Does that mean... Alright, everybody's patched up, I guess. Forgot I need to give you this for plot reasons. Gunny! How many kills? You need two kills. Mm, we'll either get it or we won't. Gunny! Plus three armor, plus one aggro. Give Gunny the strength resist. Gunny! Anyway. Fuck it. Get some great morale going on. And I'll catch you guys next time. Wait.